31st and 32nd degrees. The Masonic religion should be the Luciferian doctrine. Lucifer is God. The true and pure philosophical religion is the belief in Lucifer. So, Yabulon is really an alternative name for the devil. The last syllable, On, is a code name for the ancient Egyptian god Osiris, who was the god of the dead. There can be no doubt that the Scottish Rite form of Freemasonry in America and Britain is controlled by high-ranking 33rd degree Masons who worship Satan or Lucifer as their god. We're talking about occultic forces, uh, we're talking about the five-pointed pentagram which was used by satanic worshippers for thousands of years. If you take the five points off of a five-pointed star or a pentagram, you have left in the middle a pentagon. The pentagon is directed toward the North Star because according to the ancient Babylonians, that's where you, got, you gathered power from the gods of the North in war. We cannot allow our sons and daughters to be sent to die in a bankster's war. For oil, for heroin, for cocaine, for gold, or for control. Sun Tzu, the great strategist of war, said that all confrontations are won before the battle begins. There has never been a battle that has been won defensively. But we must prepare by becoming self-sufficient. We must prepare to do that which has not been done before. Once identifying the enemy, they have to be routed out. <laughs> The British royal family recently suffered intense embarrassment when it was revealed that the father of the Duchess of Kent was an SS officer. To be a member of Hitler's SS, families had to be pure Aryan, with their German ancestry clearly traceable to the Teutonic Knights of medieval Germany. Like most of the British royal family, the Duchess of Kent is descended from German blood. Her German ancestors have throughout history been members of the Illuminati Secret Society Network. The British royal family's name is not Windsor. Their real family name is actually Saxa Coburg Gotha. In his book, The Forgotten Monarchy of Scotland, his Royal Highness Prince Michael of Albany publishes ancient heraldic documents which expose the true lineage of the British royals. Ancient heraldic documents suggest that the British royal family's lineage comes from ancient Hebrew or Jewish tribes of the Old Testament. During the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, she referred to England as Israel or Jerusalem, 
according to the Masonic reference works that you can get in any library, the, uh, <clears throat> the Freemasonic Orders of Europe said that there was a little ideologue, a little spiritual entity that gave the knowledge to what the Masons call our hidden masters. That's what Freemasonry re refers to those who lead world Freemasonry. They don't know who they are. No, no Freemason knows who the, the actual leaders of the world organization are. They call them our hidden masters. Well, according to the reference works, there is a little spiritual entity that, that guides the world Freemasonry, and they call him Yoda. And in, the, and in the reference works, you'll see this little creature with the, with the pointed ears, and he's called Yoda. Yota goes back to Judah, or Judah, which goes back into British Israel world Freemasonry, going back to the time of, uh, of the founding of England, and that's why they're today called British. The British, it's a very big difference between being English and British. Brit is Hebrew for a contract or a covenant, and ish means man in Hebrew. During the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, her personal spy, Mr. John Dee, was responsible for establishing the British Secret Service. John Dee was a magician and member of an alchemical secret order. He is thought to be the author of the ancient Voynich Manuscript, which is now owned by Yale University, and is kept under lock and key just a few yards away from the headquarters of the Skull and Bones Secret Society. The Duchess of Kent might be ashamed of her father having been a member of the SS but she might equally be keen to play down the fact that her husband, the Duke of Kent, is Britain's most senior royal Freemason. The Duke and Duchess of Kent live at Kensington Palace, which is home to the Royal Alpha Masonic Lodge. The Royal Alpha Lodge was established by the Duke of Sussex after he became Grand Master of United Grand Lodge in 1813. One of its most eminent members was the physician in ordinary to Queen Victoria, Sir William Gull, who Stephen Knight claims was responsible, along with several other eminent Freemasons, for the Jack the Ripper murders in Victorian London. Suitably, members of the Royal Alpha Lodge at Kensington Palace are called Princes of the Blood Royal. Secret societies across the planet proudly claim to have geniuses such as Mozart and Kings amongst their membership. But none of these secret societies allow their members to speak of the rituals which go on behind closed doors in palaces and government buildings around the world. The satanic rituals of Freemasonry have been practiced by several kings of England but all those questions sweep Freemasonry's darkest satanic secrets under a very plush carpet. Howardy in Taui. Tim Jaffa Kau Tapin M Awef Mu F Ta F Sem F Mena Menet F Nebet Hayat Nebet Henenet Nebet Jedefuit F Awet F Hasset Semau M Sanut
one of the most influential secret societies spawned by the Bavarian Illuminati is the Order of the Golden Dawn. It was founded in 1887 by a Freemason, William Wynne Westcott, who claimed to have deciphered a coded alchemical script containing initiation rituals of a secret German occult order called Die Golden Dummerein. Westcott already had plenty of experience conducting occult rituals. In 1865, he had helped establish a Masonic order called the Societas Rosicruciana, inspired by the Jewish magic of the Hebrew Kabbalah. These rituals are still enacted at study group meetings at the United Grand Lodge in London. For many years, the Golden Dawn held its meetings at the London headquarters of the Mark Masons. The Golden Dawn was plagued with scandal as rival high-ranking Masons wrestled for control of this influential Victorian secret society. In 1891, Westcott lost control of the Golden Dawn to another high-ranking Freemason magician called McGregor Mathers. Together with the poet W.B. Yeats, they devised new magical rituals and initiated the senior members of Britain's aristocracy. In 1903, control of the Golden Dawn was yet again seized by another Freemason called A.E. Waite. The rituals of the Golden Dawn were similar to ancient witchcraft. At the Old Bailey in 1901, two Golden Dawn associates, Mr. and Mrs. Horos, were tried for rape. They had used the Golden Dawn initiation ceremony to beguile their teenage victims. The Golden Dawn was nothing more than Freemasonry with added semi-satanic and sexual mysteries. The Golden Dawn still survives to this day. In 1987, a conference was held in London to commemorate the centenary of the Golden Dawn's conception. The conference was organized by the Hermetic Research Trust, whose trustees include the Marquess of Northampton, who is a prominent Royal Arch Freemason. Satanists do not um, uh, take part in certain rituals with certain sounds in certain places and certain colors and certain, um, you know, verbal statements. They don't do it because, oh, that'd be nice, let's say that, and then we'll have, shall we have a bit of red, or what do you think? No, no, it's done because everything in this reality is vibration. Um, consciousness in this reality is vibration. Everything is a vibrational field. This is how astrology works. Um, when we're born, uh, the, where the planets are, they're sending out um, uh, vibrational uh, uh, projections that are affecting the vibrational field that we are born into and that's why we are affected differently at different times of the year. Therefore they understand this and they're manipulating these vibrational fields all the time to manipulate us. And so these rituals are, are oh, just a pageant. It's like, it's like the, the Freemasonic rituals. You know, you talk to um, Freemasons, the vast majority of Freemasons not trying to manipulate anyone, not on a mass scale anyway. And they'll say, oh, well, I, so what about these rituals? Like, oh, I don't know. They do silly things. You always try to leg up and bare your bloody breast. I don't know. It's an ancient bloody tradition. I don't know what it's all about. Anyway, you, you know, they, they do a nice dinner, you know, so you only have to do it once. They don't realize that these um, initiation rituals are actually set up to affect the participants in a certain way that allows these other dimensional entities, which folklore have talked about for thousands of years, all over the bloody planet, this uh, theme of possession by demons, um, these are um, um, entities that exist just outside the frequency range of the five senses. Because, you know, again, because of the suppression of basic knowledge of who we are and the nature of life, we become child's play to manipulate. Um, for instance, people look through their eyes and they think they're seeing everything in the space they're looking at. No, no, they're seeing a fraction of it. They're seeing um, a tiny frequency range that the five senses can access. Just like if you tune to Radio 1, you get Radio 1. 
you don't get Radio 2, you get Radio 1. Um, and this is why, you know, if there was a cat in this room now, it might be reacting to what is to us here empty space. But it's not empty space to the cat because it has a greater visual frequency range. Right. Now, <clears throat> just outside the frequency range of the five senses are entities that are manipulating this five sense reality through these particular bloodlines. And, and one of the key places where this possession takes place is during these satanic rituals and, and, and gatherings when the vibrational environment is created by the ritual that allows this um, takeover of the mental and emotional processes of these people um, to take place. And this is why um, you'll meet so many uh, people who've known famous politicians and staff when they started in politics or before they came into politics. And they'll say, you know, mate, that guy ain't the bloke that I knew. Well, mentally and emotionally, that's literally true in a lot of cases because of this possession that takes place. And people think it's kind of far-fetched and almost maddening that, that, that it may be happening in Babylon, but not now. Well, please. Um, that very thought is the greatest defense mechanism this grotesque conspiracy has to protect it. agganciato qui, no? Tanto si è agganciato di là, quindi è aperto dentro, no? Poi io leggo eh, le mani, eh, le mani qui, qui, leggo i piedi, i piedi qui alla... Si può vedere, si può vedere questi? E questo leggermente si ecco, può legare il braccio, vedete? il braccio di qua di là e i piedi lo stesso a questo piola qui e dunque e qui se c'è questa cinta perché eh, sono terribili questa e questa qui per legare alla vita la vita in modo che non si muova sento nemmeno mettere questo qua cioè sotto vedete qui c'è ecco si, si vede in questo modo si vede altrimenti non si legge e rompono tutto uh, dunque tutto questo adesso vi faccio vedere faccio vedere cosa sono capace di fare questo qui questo questo può essere una ragazza che ha detto questo è di acciaio questo è, corrisponde a questo qui eh, no, corrisponde vediamo qua guarda passo una qui dentro vediamo, se lo troviamo eh, beh, questo qui sarebbe questo vedete come l'ha ridotto è difficile poi vedere il problema non è, non è possibile l'ha visto Il demonio è paura dell'esorcista, l'esorcismo è lui che ha paura e non abbiamo paura noi. E, e sono contento di dare il botto al demonio. Quando mi dice il demonio che chi sei, io devo domanda, Satana, ah ora mi sei capitato, adesso ti ho dato un sacco di botte. Dunque, e, e, e quindi è lui che grida. Perché quando grida la persona, ci sono dei gridi qui delle suore che, che si sentono a volte fino, fino in fondo, fino, fino alla strada si sentono. Dunque nel giardino ma non è la, la, certamente la persona che grida ma è il demonio che sente questa, queste botte diciamo così Martina and her parents have been coming to see Padre Alfredo regularly for the past six months. The family has turned to the exorcist in an attempt to solve problems which have troubled their daughter since she was eight years old. Although Martina comes to the sessions willingly, as soon as she enters Padre Alfredo's bunker, she suffers a violent reaction. For her own safety, she has to be restrained before the exorcism can begin. Prendi l'acqua, 
preoccupate, prendo l'acqua, là, prendo l'acqua. Lasciami! Prendo l'acqua. Sì, ci ho pensato, ma. L'acqua, là. Non ci ho pensato. Là. Sta buona? Va buona, forza. Ci provo a pensare, ci provo a pensare. Eh? The exorcism consists of a ritual first formulated in 1614 and updated by the Vatican two years ago. Nel nome del Padre, del Figlio e dello Spirito Santo. Signore Gesù Cristo, Dio di Padre, Padre, Dio di Padre, Dio di è di Cristo è di Cristo è di Cristo ecco 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 l'acqua del Signore e il Dio Gesù ma viene una forza particolare dunque c'è ho notato questo a volte il demonio eh, quando, siccome è l'esorcismo sono come fosse uno bastonate picchia il, il demonio no? E mette l'acqua santa nella per la mano br mi brucia oh, 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 mi sono accorto di questo il demonio è furbo e cerca di parlare per, per, per riposarsi avete visto mai i pugili i pugili quando si danno i pugni a un certo punto si abbracciano si riposano si riposano respirano un attimo il demonio fa la stessa tattica dunque parla e io invece non, devo, non bisogna dargli retta Continuare il sorcismo, in modo che non ci attregua, sono botte, 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 botte. Ave Maria, piena di grazia, il Signore è con te. Tu sei benedetta fra le donne. Eh, Ave Maria, piena di grazia, il Signore è con te. Tu sei benedetta fra le donne. Benedetta fra le donne. Santa Maria, ma libera. Ma Maria, no, no, ma maligno, maligno, il Cristo è più forte. Caccia le mie, la Di la verità. Di la verità. Di la verità, di la verità a questa signora, esiste o non esisti tu? Il demonio esiste o non esiste? Esiste! Come... Esiste il demonio! Come fa a dimostrarlo? Come fa a dimostrarlo non che esiste? Non vale le guerre, tutto, tutto! Ma questo... Io esisto e chi Ma... non ci crede bene con Ma le guerre!
the Golden Dawn's most notorious member was a self-confessed Satanist, Alastair Crowley, who styled himself as the Beast. Crowley was one of the pantheon of cult figures portrayed on the cover of the Beatles record, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Crowley had already been trying to contact the devil in 1898 when he first made contact with the Order of the Golden Dawn. By 1900, Crowley was mingling with the elite of British society, sharing his knowledge of devil worship with leading Masonic politicians, aristocrats and royalty. Crowley was a full-time occultist and had no day job in which he had to hide his fascination with Freemasonry and Satanism. In his book, Confessions, Crowley claims he was initiated into Freemasonry at the Anglo-Saxon Lodge in Paris. He also recounts how he became master of one of London's oldest and most respected lodges, the Studholm Lodge, which is now rumoured to have Tony Blair as one of its members. Crowley shared Albert Pike's enthusiasm for the devil. In his book entitled Magic, Crowley writes, The devil is this serpent, Satan. He is life and love. He is light, and his zodiacal image is Capricornus, the leaping goat, the godhead. Secret societies often portray the goat of Mendes sitting in the Baphomet position. A statue of George Washington himself, a high-ranking Freemason, shows one of America's founding fathers sitting in the same occult posture as Crowley's goat-headed devil. In 1912, Crowley became the British leader of the Ordo Templi Orientis, the OTO, which was a direct descendant to the original Bavarian Illuminati. The OTO was a hardcore satanic secret society, and Crowley devised the initiation ritual around the 33rd degree ceremony of Scottish Rite Freemasonry. Crowley claimed the formation of the OTO was reconstituting Freemasonry back to its German Illuminati roots. Crowley wanted nothing less than to dance with the devil. He was impatient with the politeness of Masonic ritual. He described basic Freemasonry in the lower ranks as a sinister association for political intrigues and pirates. Subliminable messages. I don't think we need to be subliminable, 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 subliminable. Television is a massive, massive uh, mass hypnotist to the global mind. Mm. And what happens is it is implanting a belief in reality by the minute. And then once we take on that belief, implanted 
when information enters the eyes, we edit it on the basis of that belief. And so um, what the global population is um, subjecting uh, or is subjected to, suffering from, is actually literally mass hypnosis. And when people, when we talk about people who kind of start to see things and see the manipulation they couldn't see before, what do we say about them? What do they say about themselves? They say, I woke up. Exactly what they've done. When people start to go, hey, I can see it now, it's like someone has gone along, like the, the hypnotist, and clicked their fingers, and it's like, oh, I can see it now. Mass hypnosis. And that is the greatest hypnotist on the planet, and that's the basis of why it was created. A 49-year-old unidentified man went berserk last night. Where did she get her view of the world? Shotgun. 14 people are dead, including three Who will be her role models? Never been a better time to what values will she have? Whose child is she? Yours or the network's? Take back your children. Turn off the TV. And, and when, you, um, when you start to research the uh, um, subliminals in advertising and television, um, what staggers you is not you know, what they do and what's there, but the scale of it. I mean, it's like a, our consciousness is being hit by an explosion of this stuff. Because, you see, this is another interesting point. Experiments have shown that um, about one and a half seconds before um, the conscious mind decides to take action, move its arms or whatever, speak, one and a half seconds before it consciously decides to do that, the electrical signals have begun in the brain to do it. Um, for me, the conscious level is the experiencer and observer of reality, but the subconscious is the creator of it, the generator of it. And this is why the Illuminati want the subconscious mind through subliminals. What does subliminal mean? It means below threshold. It's below the threshold the conscious mind picks up, but the the subconscious mind picks everything up like a sponge and therefore they are planting these thoughts into the subconscious which then filter down into the conscious and we think we're having our own thoughts when actually they're implanted thoughts done at a subliminal level. Rats were caught in the sewers a week ago. Now they're stopped. When the plastic door is raised up, the rats will shoot out like bullets. It was a common punishment in Imperial China. No, no, it's Julian. No, it's Julian. Not me. Julian. And, and of course, this is being used, um, this subliminal manipulation in politics. I mean, of course, we had that um, uh, incident during the uh, Bush-Gore um, uh, farce of an election when an anti-Gore um, political um, broadcast for Bush, um, they put a subliminal in of rats um, um, while they were talking, but they left it up too long and you only had to play the tape back slowly, a little slowly, and up come rats as, um, as, as some anti-Gore statement was being made.
believe that some of these states uh, that they've called, like Florida, we just, I just don't believe that I don't believe we've got enough evidence to be able to call the state. We're doing better than we thought, and um, but I feel I feel fine. In accordance with the laws of the state of Florida, I hereby declare Governor George W. Bush the winner of Florida's 25 electoral votes for the President of the United States. Now that the votes are counted, it is time for the votes to count. I wish to point out that our American democracy has triumphed once again. The Skull and Bones Secret Society was originally called the Brotherhood of Death. George Bush Jr., his father George H.W. Bush, and his grandfather Prescott Bush have all been initiated into this macabre fraternity, which was established in 1832 at Yale University by William Huntington Russell, whose family were America's biggest opium smugglers. George W. Bush was initiated into the Skull and Bones Brotherhood of Death in 1968. The ceremony took place at the Society's headquarters, which is a stone building with almost no windows. This mausoleum-type building is known as the Tomb. There is a small enclosed courtyard, an internal chamber where initiates lay masturbating inside a coffin and a museum of artifacts held sacred by the society's members, which are all called Bones Men, regardless if they are male or female. Many of the artifacts inside the Skull and Bones headquarters have been stolen by its members. To prove their devotion to the Brotherhood of Death, Bones Men have robbed graves, bringing human skulls and skeletons back to their tomb and placing them in glass display cabinets. For nearly 40 years, George W. Bush has been an active member of this most bloodthirsty occult secret society. His allegiance is primarily to his fellow bonesmen, not the American people. In order to prove his devotion to the skull and bones, Prescott Bush, grandfather of George W. Bush, savagely desecrated the grave of Apache Indian chief Geronimo. Prescott Bush robbed Geronimo's grave and had Geronimo's skull placed in a display case alongside the order's other treasured possessions, which include silver tableware from Hitler's Eagle's Nest headquarters in Nazi-occupied Austria. Welcome to the satanically inspired secret world of the Skull and Bones Brotherhood of Death. Welcome to the sick world of the Bush family. The Skull and Bones headquarters is on the campus of Yale University. Yale is home to several other lesser secret societies, including the Scroll and Key. Alexandra Robbins is an American journalist who has written a book about the Skull and Bones called Secrets of the Tomb. In her book, she traces the origins of this cult, which was funded from profits of the Russell Company in the early 1800s. The Russell Trading Company was nothing more than an opium trading empire which, still to this day, is the corporate arm of the Skull and Bones Secret Society. 
William Huntington Russell had travelled in Germany during his student years and was befriended by a disciple of Adam Weishaupt's Bavarian Illuminati. Upon returning to the USA in the early 1800s, Russell used some of his family's opium wealth to fund the building of the tomb at Yale University. Russell initiated several of his fellow classmates, including Alfonso Taft, who would go on to become the Secretary of War and ambassador to Russia. Alfonso Taft's son became President of the United States, and so a time-honored tradition of hereditary membership of the Skull and Bones Brotherhood of Death was begun. We see this tradition continue to this day, with senior Bones men encouraging young initiates to marry into each other's families, their sons and daughters following in their parents' footsteps and becoming disciples of this most unholy of orders. In the Hollywood movie Brotherhood of the Bell, we see an initiation ceremony which is a common occurrence on the campuses of America's elite Ivy League secret societies. Mr. Patterson, Philip Everest Dunning, Mr. Chad Harmon, Mr. Dunning. Mr. Dunning, the articles and letters of the Brotherhood. swear that having been entrusted with these articles and letters since midnight this night, that you alone read them and did not communicate their content to any person whatsoever? I so swear. Having so sworn, are you now prepared to go forward? I am prepared. Mr. Dunning, for over 200 years, Brothers of the Bell have been initiated before the spell, and in the same ceremony at sunrise. 22 years ago, Mr. Patterson stood due east in your place, and I became his senior, as Mr. Patterson is now yours. One day, Mr. Patterson will stand due south, and he will induct a Brother of the Bell and you will become senior. See, in this fashion does the Brotherhood express its continuity. It will continue long after all of us are dead. But that continuity depends upon one thing, obedience. Absolute obedience. If and when you are ever called upon by Mr. Patterson to pay your due bill, you must comply, whatever is asked of you. Well, that bill may come due tomorrow, in 20 years, or never. It will not be a matter of money. It will be an act of fealty, of loyalty to the Brotherhood of the Bell. Now, if you require anything at all, get in touch with your senior, and he will see to it that it's arranged for you. Are you ready for the oath? I am. The oath, gentlemen. I, I Chad, and I will do, do swear in absolute faith that I shall reveal no secret of the brotherhood of the hell, that I shall respect my brothers and myself
know, I still find it incredible that, that I could get anything I want. Anything a man could get with money, privilege, and the best connections. You know, it just occurred to me that um, we're part of the establishment now. Not part. The establishment. <laughs> fascinating book, American journalist Alexandra Robbins claims to have unearthed a skull and bones plan to dominate the world. One can't help recognizing the fact that in the 170 years since the formation of the Skull and Bones Society, it has members in the most influential jobs all over the world. New initiates seem to fall effortlessly into high-paid jobs within banks, media organizations, government agencies, and huge corporations which earn vast profits from government defense contracts. Some researchers claim that all members agree to tithe their wealth over to the society, thus ensuring that their offspring will become future initiates of the Brotherhood of Death. The Skull and Bones Brotherhood of Death recruits members from America's billionaire aristocracy. Multiple generations of the Bush family have taken part in six satanically inspired rituals along with members of wealthy families who are behind some of America's most famous brand names. Based on the rituals of the German Bavarian Illuminati, the Skull and Bones have approximately 900 members worldwide. George W. Bush has initiated five fellow Bonesmen to join his administration, including William Donaldson, who is head of the American Securities and Exchange Commission. Upon initiation into the Skull and Bones, candidates are told that they must forever deny their membership. The psychological mind programming and brainwashing which goes on inside the tomb can only be guessed at, as no bonesman has ever broken the fraternity's rule of silence. Fellow students at Yale have often said that on the night of ceremonies, blood-curdling yells and shrieks can be heard from inside the tomb. Some say the initiates are forced to wrestle in mud and are even beaten. This technique has been used by the CIA and EST brainwashing organizations who seek to wear down the subject mentally and physically using a program of punishment and verbal abuse. Once the will of the candidate has been broken and they have divulged all their sexual secrets to the elder bonesmen, they stand naked and are reborn in a mockery of a Christian baptism with elder bonesmen dressed as the Pope and the devil conducting the ritual. Ron Rosenbaum is a journalist who writes for the New York Observer. He secretly filmed an initiation ceremony from the top of a building near the Skull and Bones headquarters. Members of the order dress up as the devil, the pope, and a kind of Don Quixote character. The Pope wears a white monogrammed slipper which rests upon a stone skull. Each initiate is led into a chamber where fellow members shout obscenities and abuse the new initiate. The initiates are told that they are superior beings and are part of a privileged elite who use war 
terror and famine to control Earth's human population. This callous philosophy was illustrated in the Hollywood movie Skulls, made in 1999. Over the years, there have been several break-ins um, at the tomb, which is the headquarters of the Skull and Bones at Yale University. Um, the artefacts which have been found have included membership lists of another secret society which operates on the campus called the Scroll and Key. Now, it seems pretty obvious uh, as we research this material that the wolf's head Phi Beta Kappa, uh, the Scroll and Key, and Skull and Bones are all different flavours of the same Bavarian Illuminati secret society. One by one, each new member is thrust to his knees and bows before the devil. A naked woman is ceremoniously assaulted with a dagger. The devil lays each initiate into a coffin and a ribbon is tied to their genitalia. Everyone is encouraged to divulge their entire sexual life history whilst masturbating. With all their innermost secrets known to the other bonesmen, the new initiates are threatened with blackmail if they ever reveal the secrets of this Masonic order. At this point, they are dressed in long robes and rechristened with their occult names. The Don Quixote character taps each member on the shoulder with a silver sword and proclaims, by our order, I dub thee Knight of Eulogia. we can exclusively reveal that George Bush Sr.'s occult name is Magog, which is the name of the evil army commanded by Satan to visit Earth and destroy the Kingdom of Christ. The American Ivy League colleges each have their own branches of the Skull and Bones Brotherhood of Death, indoctrinating the children of America's elite families who go on to become the captains of industry, banking, law, military and the media. The epicenter of this elite cabal is Yale University. The last three presidents attended Yale, as did the terrorist expert Paul Bremer III, who governs Iraq for the Bush-Cheney Skull and Bones elite. Members of the Anglo-American Illuminati network also share the same philosophy. They believe in a single, all-powerful superstate, which is governed by a single world leader. If the Illuminati were successful, and their dream would come true, it would be a virtual hell on earth. That is what the New World Order is all about. It's a living hell. It's Orwell's worst dream and nightmare. Well, to understand the philosophy of the Skull and Bone Society, you have to understand the philosophy of 18th and 19th century Germany with people such as Hegel. Now, the dialectic system, the dialectical political system, was not devised by Karl Marx. It was actually developed by Hegel, Fichte, and uh, also contributed to by Kant. These German philosophers uh, believed that you could create change in society by conflict. And this could be, for example, political conflict. Uh, the conflict between left and right. 
from this conflict a new political system would come about and this would be a synthesis of the two views. Now that sounds pretty innocent but in actual fact the dialectical system is used in military combat as well and Hegel's plan uh, which is being actually carried out right now is to create conflict to create wars and through the creation of wars several things happen first of all the companies which manufacture the missiles the guns the bullets the uniforms and all of the paraphernalia to do with uh, warfare all make huge profits uh, secondly uh, there is a culling of the male population. Since the 1950s we've had several reports from think tanks that feed information into the European Union, the British government, also the American government, which are recommending depopulation. And there is uh, several plans uh, which we believe have been put in motion right now. And obviously war is one way of depopulating uh, the planet. Now, in addition to creating false conflict and engineered wars, the Hegelian uh, philosophical system, which is being followed by the Skull and Bone Society at Yale and also the group at All Souls College at uh, Oxford University, um, the Hegelian system also requires uh, complete and utter obedience from everyone in society. Uh, the idea of freedom, freedom of thought, freedom of the individual to choose what they want to do with their lives um, doesn't come into play at all under this German Hegelian system. In actual fact, um, Hegel uh, says that uh, the individual should be 100% obedient to the state and the state should take on the image of God. Now, in the Hegelian system, the state is all-powerful, so we should ask ourselves, uh, what is the state? Well, the state is the elite. The state is the royal, aristocratic hierarchy who are able to maneuver and live their lives in any way that they choose because they are super wealthy. Now let's just talk about super wealth and super wealthy people. I can tell you now after meeting quite a few of them that they are very very different to you or me. Uh, when I'm talking about super wealth I am not talking about uh, Puff Daddy who has uh, allegedly three Bentleys. I'm talking about super wealth, uh, family wealth which was uh, in the millions back in the 19th century. Now, when we look at uh, this hierarchy of aristocrats and royal uh, families uh, around the world, we can see that they are the state. They are the people that the robots, I call them robots, uh, the civil servants who run the machinery of the state, it is the civil servants who swear allegiance to this elite. When you join the British civil service, you do not swear an oath to serve the British people. You swear an oath to serve the monarch. Um, it's the same when you become a spy, when you join MI5 or MI6 or any of the other DI or MI agencies, uh, and there's many of them run by the British government. You are swearing allegiance to serve the reigning monarch, not the British people. <laughs> While the American people sing the Star Spangled Banner, the most powerful people in the USA and Europe salute the ancient symbol of the Brotherhood of Death.
In the book, Who's Who of America's Elite, the author has found that the order of the skull and bones encourages its members to intermarry, thus keeping their spectacular wealth all in the family. Good evening. Good evening. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack. America was targeted for attack because we're the brightest beacon for evil and the very worst of human nature. I've directed the full resources of our intelligence and law enforcement communities to find those who want peace and security in the world and to bring them to justice. We will make no distinction between the terrorists who committed these acts and the victims of the American economy. Our military is evil and it's prepared. Our country is evil, deliberate and deadly evil. All that is evil, comforted by evil, and no one will keep that evil from shining. And on behalf of the American power greater than any of us, I thank the many world leaders who have called to offer their financial institutions and assistance. America and our terrorist friends and allies join with all those who want despicable chaos and terrible evil. And we stand together to win the war against all that is good and just. None of us will ever find those responsible. Thank you. Good night. And God. Alive. It's alive. Now they will know why they are afraid of the dark. Now they will learn why they fear the night. There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. I want counterculture. I want anti-establishment. This is mass madness, you maniacs. You maniacs. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. I believe America is ready for a new beginning. Uh, the new prime minister of India is... Uh... No. The Skull and Bones was founded using money from opium. Retired Colonel Bo Gritz is a 33rd degree Freemason who interviewed Viet Cong soldiers after the Vietnam War, who told him that George Bush Sr. 
and Richard Armitage were at the head of an opium trading gang during the Vietnam War. Afghanistan is the world's largest supplier of opium and since the US invasion in 2002 the growing of opium poppies has reached staggering proportions with money from the British government being used by opium farmers to plant gigantic fields of poppies. The BBC confirmed in April 2004 that since the invasion and occupation of Afghanistan by British and American forces, poppy production has reached an all-time high. Bones men have never had such an ideal opportunity to follow in the footsteps of their forebears and start smuggling opium. The American and British war machines are commanded by men who have all sworn allegiance to the blood-curdling murderous demon gods of the Illuminati. They are sacrificing the lives of your sons and daughters on the altar of the all-seeing eye.